Beaverworks Diecast Racing, your source for diecast racing action. Welcome back, Diecast Racing fans. We've got an excellent show for you tonight. Beaverworks Diecast Racing and the Igloo Proving Grounds is bringing you our first Stone Road Open mail-in event, folks. Group one, round one, and we have got four of the top builders and drivers from around the world here to participate in our off-road course. Look at these vehicles, all sorts, all different types, all from around the world, all here to check out and try out our Stone Road Challenge, folks. So here it is. Let's get into the Stone Road Open Group 1. Vehicles. Arlo from Arlo Racing, driving the custom Hummer EV. The legend himself, and he has come down to the Stone Road. Honored to have him, and he brought the Hummer EV. This is going to be some electrical off-road going down on this one. All pimped out. See how it does. Landlines from Venice Beach, California, driving the F-483. All right, according to the literature, the 483 stands for a Cadillac Big Block has been swapped inside of this what looks like a big old Ford. More importantly, it is full of logs, just like the Stone Road, and it looks like a big keg of Moosehead. Puff from Puff's Racing, driving the custom 19 Silverado. Another diecast racing legend, we have Puff, and he's been in all sorts of races around the world, sending us his 19 Silverado, all jacked up and weighted up. Should do good. Crazy Canuck from 905 Diecast, driving the custom Jeep Wagoneer. Fellow Canadian here from 905 Diecast, love that channel, and he's got his Jeep Wagoneer sporting the Carolina Squat. <laughs> Whistling Diesel would love to get a hold of this vehicle. Got that great big huge bumper, great big front tires, got lots of weight, should do excellent on the Stone Road. The Stone Road Challenge, folks. It is the heavy off-road course here at the Igloo Proving Grounds. It is 150 centimeters of loose aggregate rocks, logs, curves, and then we have got the bonus distance out the bottom side here. It's kind of like a long jump pit. Anyways, points. One point for crossing the finish line. One point for the longest distance per round. Two points for the fastest time per round. Each vehicle will have two passes and the top two vehicles in points will advance. Run, run, run. run. All right, here we go. We got Arlo down for the first run tonight, and it's going to be in that electric EV. He's raced on all sorts of tracks. Let's see how he does on the stone road. He's going down. He's got some good speed getting into the deep stuff, and it buried him. Weren't expecting that. There's a DNF for Arlo on the first run. He got into the deep part of the bottom half for the track and just sunk inside there. Looks like it might be a little bit too much weight, little too much grabby, not too sure there. Maybe he just ran out of battery power about halfway down there. Not sure there. He makes 92 centimeters is going to be the official distance on Arlo's run. Igloo replay. He looked good at the start. Gets up there, gets some speed. You got to get up on on top of those rocks. That's a low slung vehicle though. He's got them polished up on the bottom and just ended up cutting in and getting in deep. Looks like the whole back end just sunk right in there. Well, there it is, folks. Run number one. The first mail-in order is Arlo and he gets a DNF with 93 centimeters. Run, Run two. two. All right, here we go, everybody. We got landlines in that F-483 Cadillac engine swap out in that big old Ford, and he's off. 
off the line a little slow, but he's on top of the rocks and just ripping down through that part, no problem. Over top of the logs, out the end, and into the bonus area. That was an excellent looking run at a 7.66 time, and that is what we're looking for here on the Stone Road Challenge right there. What an awesome looking truck, and that load made it all the way down. That's a good secured load going there. Top down, bottom up, Kim. Hey, he makes it to the bottom, loving every second of that beautiful run. 22.5 centimeters on the bonus distance, which is almost at the end of the scale. All right, checking out the Igloo replay from Venice, California. He said he's got Colorado plates on it. Sounds like this thing is just a mishmash of everything. Makes a beauty run through the deep stuff, no problem. Approaching the log hazard, it picks a great line, kicks one up at the announcer stand. We're getting pretty used to that nowadays. All right, there is landlines. 22.5 centimeters and 7.66 time. Run right, right, three. three. Moving along, we have Puff from Puff's Racing here in that 19 Silverado. You all know him, you all love him. Here he goes, he's off the line. Getting up on the top of their stud and doesn't make it very far at all. He kind of got stuck right off to the line there. He is just barely past the 30 centimeter mark. Something must be going on with the vehicle there. We we're expecting a little bit more distance out of that. Still relatively stock Silverado. We're going to have to take a look at this because Igloo Replay looks like he just got bound up right in the first batch of loose stuff right at the start of the track. And he is stopped dead there right at about the 32 centimeter mark. That means he's going to be leaving round one with a DNF. Right, right, four. All right, folks, we got Crazy Canuck, the fellow metric user, going to be taking the Stone Road for the first time. 905 Diecast is an excellent channel. Make sure you check that out. Here he goes, and he's flying. There's rocks everywhere. He's loving this run. He's got it in the bag, hitting the log hazard. Look at that great crab walk he did across the log. Slowed him up a little bit there. Got to do everything a little bit different. He's got enough tires on the top of that vehicle, and it made it down with an 11.32 time. Checking out the replays, we got the top down, bottom up cam. That thing just looks so top heavy. He's all wobbly down there, does a wicked crab walk, just kind of goes right through the log, kind of slideways. Got a bonus distance of 16.5 centimeters, which is respectable. Checking out the igloo replay. Look at how he handles the start, is excellent. That front end's up, bouncing around, starts throwing rocks already. Still on top of him, gets the good weight distribution, those front wheels those great big suckers just help pull him through the deep section then he's looking out the logs trying to pick a line he goes high side low side right through them almost stops right in front of the booth but still able to pull it through gooses up one more time gets over top of the line and there is the run for crazy canuck gets over top of that with a 11.32 time and a 16.5 centimeter run that means the final results for round one, 93 centimeters and a DNF for Arlo, 22.5 centimeters and a 7.66 time for Landlines, 32 centimeters and a DNF for Puff and 11.32 with 16.5 for Crazy Canuck, which means Landline is in the lead after the first round. Fresh back from Gravity Throttle Racing, that is the Toyota Off-Road we sent into the Are You Truckin' 2 tournament. All right, Group 1, Round 1 review. So far, we've got Landlines and Crazy Canuck are the only two that have made full runs on that. And we've got Crazy Canuck here doing that crab walk slide over top of the logs. They sit there watch that maneuver all day. That was excellent. There it is. We had Arlo and Puff. Didn't make it on the first round. Arlo looks like he just bottomed out there, got a bad line. And meanwhile, Puff might have something to do with the truck. We're not sure because he didn't make it very far at all. We're going to go up to the top of the mountain and let Lance and Lester give us an update. Thank you, voice. All right, everybody, Lester here, and we are up here at the race shop to see if we can figure out what happened to these two vehicles that DNF'd. Lance is currently stuffing his face with some Texas smoked brisket. Mm, this, this brisket's amazing, girls. Which is exactly what I'm going to be doing after we take a look here at Puff Silverado. And it looks like it has uh, maybe taken some shipping damage on the rear axle here. So the race shop's gonna take a look at that before the next round. 
And then we have Arlo. He's here, and uh, he didn't get down the track this time, but his rig looked like it's all buttoned up pretty well. So maybe we're just going to let him float and see if he can hook up a better line on the next race. All right, back down to you, voice. Thanks for that, Lester, and make sure you save some brisket for the rest of us, eh? All right, there's Landlines. He is the leader coming out of round number one. We got Crazy Canucks, the only other one that finished, and two more DNFs got one more shot coming up next week, and you'll get a preview look at the Group 2 cars. All right, folks. We all hope you liked the first episode here of the Stone Road Open Group 1 Round 1 Cars. All right. Don't forget to hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed, you can do that for us. And we've got Facebook, TikTok, little updates going on out there. From Beaverworks Diecast Racing, we'll see you next time. Diecast Racing, your source for diecast racing action. Welcome back, Diecast Racing fans and beaver lovers out there. We are getting on with the mail in challenge here at Beaverworks Diecast Racing and the Igloo Proven Grounds bringing you the Stone Road Open, folks. And we are on with round two of the group two cars mail in challenge and look at these beautiful rigs we got round one recap we had shoddy didn't quite make it down there bolo brown made it upside down coming down in the bug there and racity man in the work truck barely made it halfway and then right when y'all thought the stone road wouldn't let anything go by we had dusty miles throwing down a wicked run there we're going up to the top of the mountain and let you see some more How's it going, everybody? Lance and Lester here. Oh, yeah. And we're here with Dusty Miles' F-150 monster that just shredded the stone road on his first run. His suspension showed the brilliant use of the jump drawer and produced a top runner for the stone road. That's just, look at this thing. Top runner, indeed. This build just upped the game for sure. Now, back down to you, boys. Thanks for that from the top of the mountain, Lance and Lester hanging out with Dusty Miles and that sweet looking rig. And if you want to vote for the truck you think is the best looking one, you can do that over on the community tab. We got the F483 Landlines. Group number one is leading for that. And group number two so far is Dusty Miles in that F150. But Shoddy's not that far behind. All right, enough with the opening stuff. Let's get on with group two, round two. Right, right, right. right. All right, here we go, round two of the group two trucks. We got Shoddy in that sweet looking Dodge D100 from Nickel Racing. Here he goes, he's down off the line. He's a little bit faster this time, staying on top of it. He's digging through and he's coming through, just made it through the deep stuff. Wow, he's over the logs, bring some with him, and he's over the line with a 10.80. That is amazing. He made it on the second round. First round, he got buried about halfway through, but this time he did a great job coming down. Maybe the uh, think the uh, race shop took a look at that truck a little bit, but uh, didn't do much to it. It was still enough to get down over top of the logs and into the trap at the end. Sweet looking build, sweet looking ride coming out with a bonus distance of 15.5 centimeters after the finish line. Igloo replay, shiny coming down in the D100, making it look good and holding on to it this time. He did make it on the first run got a dnw you love that little rock popping up there like boink. <laughs> anyways down through the deep stuff he was able to stay on top just enough momentum had the bottom flat enough to slide over top of all that didn't want to get stuck on the logs decided to plow right through him and he is out the bottom 10.80 time and 15.5 centimeters right right two all right, Bolo Brown in that Bolo Brown bug from Miniature Car Racing is going to try and keep it upright on this round. Let's see how he does. All right, he's off the line. He's going good. He's up on top of it. He's getting some good speed into the deep stuff, and it bogged. He buried it. His suspension was too low. Still had those little wheel tabs underneath it, and it got into the deeper stuff and ate it. 
doesn't really. Uh, look at her. There he's going down. He's got lots of good speed. He thinks that he'd have enough momentum to plow through that, but sometimes that bottom end is just going to bind you up. 94.5 centimeters is what he's going to get off of that run, folks. All right, let's check in this thing out in the Baja Bug. Going down. He's got extra weight inside there, but didn't quite flatten off the bottom half. Sometimes you get those little wheel tabs and they just bind up right there. He just had a couple more centimeters to make it out of the rocks and didn't make it on that run. 94 centimeters in a DNF for Bola Brown. Run, run three. three. Second run for Rusty Man in that F-150 Raptor from Chowhound Racing and see how he does in this run. Going on down, and you can tell that paint job definitely makes it faster, right? <laughs> Anyways, down, he's pushing, he's plowing, he's trying to force that thing down through all that aggregate, and it's just not doing it for him this time. He's bound up this time somewhere around. He's just a little after the 70 centimeter mark. We'll get a measurement for you there. You can see how far in that buried the front end and all that gravel. He's going down. He's trying to push through it. He's definitely giving it everything he's got inside of what's left of that truck anyways. And uh, yeah, there it is. Official measurement. We got 77 centimeters for Rassity Man in that F-150 Raptors. Good thing he had one of them represented in this uh, challenge here, and it, uh, it's getting pretty loose there. You can see it's just kind of flopping around, body on chassis there, and he's uh, he's pushing it through. He's getting, it looks like he's having a little race with the rock down the side there, and uh, it looks like the little rock won. All right, there it is. Rasty Man, run number two in that F-150 Raptor, gets 77 centimeters in a DNF. Right, right, four. Moving along, we got Dusty Miles out. He absolutely killed it in the first round. Let's see how he does in this F-150, the 78 older style, all jacked up on those great big wheels, and he's flying. He's giving her again. Looks like he slowed down a little bit, but he's through the logs, through everything. He's got a 6.5 forward time and just stuck the landing this time. Look at that. What a beautiful looking rig and an ingenious build there by Dusty Miles. Look at that coming down. Throwing it through the deep stuff, throwing it through the rocks, barely felt it again on that round. Gets a bonus distance of 23 centimeters. That's almost at the end of the scale, folks. All right, here he is, Igloo Replay. This thing is just beautiful to watch. Those wheels up and down, just bouncing and throwing the rocks. Just digs right in there, and the deep stuff slows him down a little bit, but it doesn't matter. I'm telling you, that suspension is such a treat to watch coming down the stone road, out the bottom. There's a wicked run there. Dusty Miles again, 6.54 time and 23 centimeters. All right, let's get a recap of round two. We've got Shoddy made it down this second time. Got one point out of that. Bolo Brown just didn't make it. Didn't make it upside down this time. Got 94 centimeters. Rossity Man got further than he did last time with 77 centimeters. But Dusty Mile again owns the stone road on that run. Gets four points. So that means overall group two final results. We got Shoddy. One point after he made it on the second run. Bolo Brown both runs runs upside down once and this didn't make it the second time he ends up with a zero rossity man bringing the work truck and boss is probably wondering where that went ends up with zero out of two rounds and he had dusty miles that is a perfect run folks just absolutely owned it with eight points overall all right, now let's go see where the overall standings are. We got Dusty Miles just owned the top spot and top time with 5.76. That bumps landlines and Arlo down once. We got one more to the low points list with Shoddy in the D100 and two over at no points. Bolo Brown and Rossity Man joining Puff. Looks like we're going to have separate screens next round. There they are, folks. Little preview of the Group 3 cars coming up. We're going to have the regular preview screens up and the vote screens up by the end of the week for those guys because them are some excellent builders coming in again for the next group. Group 2, round 2 review. We had Shoddy made it all the way down this time. After he DNF'd the first round, we had Bolo Brown. Looked like he was going to make it and then got hung up in the deep stuff there. Rossity Man just, you know, did the regular plow down through as far as he could make it. And then, of course, Dusty Miles just rocked the track again. All right. 
Lance here with Lester and Dusty Miles, the current Stone Road truck to beat. And Shotty in the D100, the only other Group 2 vehicle to make it to the bottom, so he gets the second spot. Dr. Dodge is becoming a permanent vendor here at the Igloo Proving Grounds. I'm not sure why I had to mention that. Because the stuff that comes out of that RV setup is amazing, and good on the brass for setting up that yummy deal. That is definitely it. There you have it, the two advancing vehicles from Group 2, Dusty Miles from Milestone Racing. And Johnny from Nectar Racing in that Dodge D100. All right, back down to you, voice. Thanks for that from the top of the mountain, hanging out with the two advancing vehicles. It's going to be Dusty Miles and Shoddy in the D100 and the F-150 moving on to the next round. This episode has been brought to you by the Beaver Works Race Shop. And through all of this, we have still been hammering out the vehicles, getting them in the mail, sending them out to the respective tracks around the world. Keep your eyes out for any Beaver Works vehicles from the race shop. And there's a lot of super cool tracks out there with a lot of super cool builders. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And there's like love button, all sorts of stuff over there. We've got Facebook. We've got the TikTok. Great ways to get a hold of the channel and check out for updates. But in the meantime, that's wrapping it up for this one from Beaverworks Diecast Racing. We will see you next time. Beaverworks Diecast Racing, your source for diecast racing action. Welcome back, Diecast Racing fans and beaver lovers out there. We are coming at you from the Great White North, eh? Beaverworks Diecast Racing and the Igloo Proving Grounds carrying on with our mail-in event, the Stone Road Open. Group 3, Round 2. There they are, folks. When we had some excellent Round 1 action with these guys coming down, Gil Gesture not quite making it down on the first run. Then we had Mr. Dark from Dubious Diecast made an excellent run. Lily the dog had a sad wipeout, and it was a good one, though. And then we had James Ironbeard over the line, rolling it. Let's go to the top of the mountain and check him out. How's it going, everybody? Lester here, and I'm up here with James Ironbeard. And you can tell that he was watching the Stone Road because he's got the bottom all shaved up there. He's got good weight inside there, and the paint job's amazing. That's why it did good on the Stone Road. And then you have Dubious Diecast with Mr. Dark and the Tesla Cybertruck who got the longest distance out of this round in just a bit of a slower time, still did a great job. Back down to you, voice. Thank you, Lance and Lester, for giving us close up of those two excellent looking builds. And you can pick your best looking build out of each round. Just go over to the community tab on the main page. And we've got Group 1 Landlines is still winning over there. We got a tie for Group Number 2 so far. Dusty Miles in the F 150 and Shoddy in the D 100. We'll need some more votes over there, folks. And Group 3 so far, it's James Ironbeard, not Toyota, that's owning it. All right, now that we're all caught up, folks, let's get on with it. Stone Road Open, Group 3. Run, 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 run. All right, let's get this show on the Stone Road. We've got King Gesture. I think I called him Kill Gesture earlier on. We'll have to see, eh? Anyways, off he goes. He's on the line. He's up on top of the rocks trying to push it, and he is blogging out already. Look at that. That Wagoneer is just trying to push through, and it's not going to make it. Stock height with a lot of weight apparently is not a good combination on the Stone Road, folks. And there he is, just past a 70-centimeter mark. We'll give you a measurement there. Let's get through the uh, top-down replay, and you can see he got stuck about half way down there don't even know if he made it as far as the first round 75 centimeters king gesture on the second run going over to igloo replay let's check out how that worked out you know almost looked like he had a bit of potential there at the start and then started sinking again this time a little bit earlier and that wagoneer is just pushing it he wants to make it that poor wagoneer it wants to get down there king gesture is giving it everything he's got it's still just not gonna make it there it is right there folks 75 centimeters and a dnf is all he can muster this time right right two 
Mr. Dark gonna plug that lightning rod in for the second run down the stone road for that Tesla Cybertruck. Let's see how he does. And he's up on top of it going. It looks great. That's pretty fast time. He's coming over top of the logs. He gets through that. He completes the circuit down at the bottom with a 7.33 time. Wicked run by Mr. Dark in the Cybertruck. The Hydro Hydra just made it to the bottom in wicked time. Getting some top down, bottom up action. You can look at that thing bounce around taking it and out the bottom that thing's got so much power they are fast vehicles 14.5 centimeters for the bonus distance out the bottom let's check out the igloo replay with that beautiful looking truck and he's got that uh, punisher sticker on the front there and doobie's die cast on the side nice red paint job they don't come in red they come in silver the only color you can get for a cyber truck but i don't think anybody can get them yet but if they're all silver red looks excellent just like he makes this run look excellent he's down through the bottom into the trap dubious die cast pulling off an 8.90 time and 12 centimeters run run three Look at the dog getting ready to take that Wagoneer down for her second run. That first run was kind of disappointing. There was a big white boat. Let's see if she can keep it on the wheels this time. She's up on top of the rocks. That thing wiggles back and forth. There's articulation like crazy all the way through. And she's getting through. No, she made it through the rocks. And just before the log, she ended up on a roof again. Look at that. Upside down, the pooch is over darn we had big hopes for lily the dog on that run but she didn't make it through got through the rocks this time but just too much side to side action there and looks like it just gave up and flipped her into the logs drag that one was there it is 122 centimeters though that's a lot further than she made in the first run and we've got the emergency crews out there making sure that the puppy is okay all right folks let's go check out some replays on this one Looked like she was going to do a great job coming off of the start, making down over top of the rocks, rocking back and forth. There's a lot of modifications inside of that wagon here. She got it all hogged out in the wheel wells to get the extra clearance and lots of articulation moving back and forth there. Might have been a little bit too much coming out of the rocks. Got sideways, got upside down, and came to rest in the logs. That was the best that Lily could muster this time. 122 centimeters and a DNF. Right, right, four. Second run for James Ironbeard in this very well-built large Toyota, getting ready to try it out on the stone road for the second run. His first run was excellent, going for the second run this time, so he can keep it on his wheels. He's up sideways. He's over top of the logs, gets a little hung up in there, spits a big rock out the bottom, and finally makes it over top of the line with an 8.51, and a much longer distance this time, kept it on his wheels out the end. That was a wicked looking run and a wicked looking truck from James Ironbeard. Top down, bottom up, Cam, you can see, gets way sideways there. Doesn't even feel the logs, it even blows it a little sideways out the bottom. Great looking run. 21.5 centimeters is the bonus distance, much better than last time. And like I said, he didn't roll it right over top of the line there. Igloo replay. Wicked truck, wicked run. He is on top of everything. Blows a big handful of rocks over the edge there. Digs in real deep in the deep section. Gets a little slowed up in the logs because you can negotiate a right line through those or a crummy one. And that was kind of in between. Then he makes it out the bottom. If he didn't get hung up in the logs, it might have made him a bit faster a time. But still... He's making it out of there with an 8.51 time and a 21.5 centimeter distance, which is huge. Round two results. We got King Gesture gets another DNF, which means he's out zero points there. Mr. Dark gets the fastest run this time, so he gets three points because he didn't get the longest run. Lily the Dog had another wipeout, so there's two points there. And James Ironbeard comes out with two points for getting the longest run. Group three final results ended up with King Gesture. Didn't make it to the bottom again this time. So another DNF zero altogether there. Mr. Dark got the fastest time on the second run. So three points and two points for the longest distance on the first run. Five altogether there. Lily the dog wiped out again this round. So zero points. And James Ironbeard ended up getting the longest run on this one after getting the fastest time last time. Five points altogether for him. So far, the overall standings, Dusty Miles is still ahead with 5.76, but that run with like James Ironbeard comes in close at a 6.02. Closest after that is a 7.33, and then the other three landlines, Arlo and Scotty. 
There's your preview, folks, for the Group 4 vehicles, and it's going to be a long one because we're going to be running five vehicles instead of just the regular four because that's just the way the mail-in count happened. There they are, and there is some seriously modified builds coming down right there, and hey, we've seen that sucker right there before. All right. Group 3, Round 2, we had King Jester just about made it. Well, not really just about at all, just kind of choked even shorter than he did before, but we had dubious dogs. Cast and Mr. Dark made a crazy run. Then we had Lily the dog almost heartbreakingly made a rollover in the logs right there because that's just what puppies love to do, I guess. And James Ironbeard out the bottom with a great time after he had to wrestle with the logs. How's it going, everybody? Back up here to the top of the mountain with James Ironbeard in this beauty build. He just rocked the track with. Didn't get the fastest time this time, but he got the longest distance. That's because he kept it on his wheels over top of the line. Anyways, fastest time goes to Mr. Dark inside of the Tesla Cybertruck. Did excellent. All right, back down to you, voice. Thanks for that for the top of the mountain. All right, there you have it. Your winners for group number three. It's going to be James Ironbeard and Mr. Dark from Dubious Diecast. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And there's a super thanks, other stuff there. We've got the Facebook and the TikTok out there in the world. You can check those out. But for this round, that's going to be it. And wow, we're loving every second of doing this mail-in tournament, folks. So from Beaverworks Diecast Racing, we will see you next time. Beaverworks Diecast Racing, your source for diecast racing action. Diecast Racing fans, we are from the frosty north home of high percentage beer and legalized cannabis. It is Beaverworks Diecast Racing and the Igloo Proven Grounds next. Stone Road Open Group 4 Round 1. And we got a doozy for you this time, folks. You know, just because uh, math didn't add up there on the mail-ins, we're going to do six vehicles for you this time. And there's still builders from around the world bringing you some of the top names in Diecast Racing. And they are are gonna put it to the stone road today first round action and it's gonna be an epic episode today folks so let's get up to the top it's going road open group four vehicles numskull from numskull racing driving the dodge d200 Starcast Racing legend Numskull. He's always got sweet looking builds and he has been checking out the stone road because he has brought to the table the d200 crew cab dodge jacked weight up he's got lots of weight inside there lots of thinking going into this one see how it does speedball herman from team gravity throttle racing driving the jeep wrangler the matchbox rendition of the jeep wrangler and it is jacked folks look at that and it's got weights on it it's got some calculator action going on in there we got some special instructions to move the weights around for the second round gravity throttle racing always putting thinker on let's check it out steve chase from chase family racing driving the dodge power wagon all right, folks, more diecast racing royalty here as we got the Chase family racing here with their Dodge Power Wagon. Good thing they brought a Power Wagon because the Jeeps got their asses kicked in the last round. Anyways, this thing has got a sweet looking paint job. It is heavy and so it should do real good. Giorgio from Team G-Force Racing driving the Land Rover. Well, would you look at this cute little guy. Anyways, G-Force Racing, and we almost lost this one in the mail, folks, but here he is. He's going to be up in the final six with the only majorette in the competition, and it seems like it is completely stock with a little bit of extra paint. Uh, well, we know where this one's going. Baby Cookie from Junkyard Joast, driving the Ford Bronco. 
All right, the Ford Bronco, and this is the one premium vehicle that we got in the Stone Road this time, folks, and it's coming in from the legendary channel, Junkyard Joe's, who's got Baby Cookie going to take this thing down the Stone Road for his first run, and it looks awesome. All right. Sisters of the Heavy Metal from Team Dr. Dodge, driving the camper van Smoker. Well, it looks like we get all sorts here, folks, and this is going to be Dr. Dodgers and his Team Sisters of the Heavy Metal coming down with the barbecue on the back of a custom camper van. Now, look at this thing. There's a whole backstory behind this thing. We're going to link that in the description, folks, but it's going to be interesting. They are going up against the Stone Road Challenge, the heavy off-road course here at the Igley Proving Grounds, folks. It is 150 centimeters of rocks, curves, logs, and there is the bonus section at the bottom. I'm sure you've heard all this before, and there's the same point system as the rest of the rounds. But what we will tell you now is that they still got the beauty competition going on over on the main channel. And uh, we've got round one is still got landlines with the F483 for group one group. Group two, we had a tie on the last check, and this time we've got Shoddy in the D100 is taking a slight lead there. And group three is still being owned by James Ironbeard in the Toyota. So get over there and vote, and now let's get on with it. Right, right, right. right. All right, getting this thing on the stone road. We got Numskull leading the pack in that Dodge D200. First one down tonight, and it's gone. He's off the line, and he's up on top of it. That thing is fast. It's got a wide wheelbase. It made it over top of the logs and flew out the other side, almost off the chart. It looked like he might be off the end of the scale at the end there. Grabbed the brakes, didn't have any rollback. Made an excellent 6.35 fast time. Top down, bottom up cam coming right to the very end of the scale right up to the lens there folks bonus distance of 26 centimeters what a way to kick off the first round tonight setting the benchmark high checking out the igloo replay he's on top of that got some good clearance on those wheels Gets a little sideways through the deep stuff, but just floors right through it. Doesn't even feel the logs, and he is all the way out the other side. Grabs the binders and holds it there. Numbskull, 6.35 time and 26 centimeters. Right, right, two. two. A ball Herman for Gravity Throttle Racing going to be taking down that Jeep on the first run. Hopefully this Jeep does better than the ones that did in the last run. Here he is. He's up on top of it. That thing's got big fat tires and set up. And he's through the logs. No problem. Comes out the bottom with a 6.67 time. That was almost evil, folks. And that thing looked awesome all the way down. And he's got a good bonus distance out the end there. I have to check that thing out. That's a nice looking paint job on that Jeep. Coming down and it performed awesome. There's the top Top down, bottom up, replay down into the sand trap at the bottom. Checking out the bonus distance of 21.5 centimeters. They're calling it for the Jeep Wrangler. Speedball Herman in there from Gravity Throttle Racing. If you haven't heard of Gravity Throttle Racing, folks, then you need to finish watching this video. Then pull your head out of the dirt and look at the rest of the diecast racing world. And check out that channel over at Gravity Throttle Racing because they have got some excellent race action. And you might as well check out like 905 Diecast, maybe Greifen Soul. There's all sorts. Anyways, there it is. Gravity Throttle Racing out the bottom. Speedball Herman in the Jeep Wrangler. Full enough 6.67 time and 21.5 centimeters. Not bad. Run, run three. three. Steve Chase, Chase Family Racing, going to be taking that Dodge Power Wagon, and this thing looks amazing. Look at how big that thing is. That paint job looks great, and he's down. That thing is fast. He's bouncing around, holding on to it, down over top of the logs. I think he was on two wheels, coming over top of the line with a 6.02 time, which is fast. That's really fast. That's not bad at all. And he came down into the trap and got a good bonus distance out the end there, too. It looks top down, bottom up, Cam. He's bouncing that thing all over the place and look at that Jenny Winely up on two wheels over top of the finish line to do a little bit of pimping there 22.5 centimeters they're calling the bonus distance out the end what an awesome looking run that was and what an awesome looking power wagon Chase family racing Steve Chase and he is up on top of there throwing the rocks all over the place getting some air off the tires then here here it is watch this over top of the line gets it up on the deuce holds it there slams it down over top of the line into the trap 
we could run in that power wagon getting a 6.02 time and 22.5 centimeters. Right, right, four. Giorgio in the Land Rover coming in from G-Force Racing. This is the only major in the competition, and it is very, very stock, folks. Let's see how he does. It is very light. We can give it that much, and he's down on top of it for a certain amount of time, and then he gets into the deeper stuff, and looks like it's sunk right there. Maybe a little bit of clearance, and the uh, stock majorette does have some suspension in there, but it's uh, not really set up for the stone road. Let's check out some bottom-down top up cam, and uh, maybe some focus there. The cameraman's getting that one together, apparently. Coming in at about 89 centimeters. That's what they're calling it there for the DNF Giorgio from G-Force Racing. All right. Maybe you haven't been watching the channel very much, knowing that uh, getting some kind of modification in your vehicle and maybe trying to cut a little bit of clearance out the bottom of that thing is very helpful when it comes to the stone road, but... Counting on the lightweight could have been the game plan. Not exactly sure, but anyways, didn't make it all the way down. We got a DNF in 89 centimeters for Giorgio. Right, right five. five. Baby Cookie from Junkyard Joust going to be taking down that Ford Bronco. This thing's pretty much stock, but it is a premium with the rubber tires. Got some good weight, and there she goes. She's up on top of it, trying to hold on to it. It's like it's plowing it. It's digging down, and it sinks right when it gets into the deep section there, right after the 80 centimeters, almost up to 90 centimeters. Not sure, but there's a DNF. First run Baby Cookie in that Junkyard Joust Ford Bronco coming down. Looks like we got some action up on top. Not looking too bad. And then just start sinking, start sinking from about halfway down, trying to push through it. Looks like we got 88.5 centimeters. That's going to be what it is for the Ford Bronco on that run. All right, baby cookie on that one. Got to get over there and check out the Junkyard Joe's channel. Another one of those channels that, you know, you are born under a rock. If you are in the diecast racing world and haven't checked that one out, we'll have all the links downstairs in the description at the end of the video. And there it is right there. Round number one for Baby Cookie, and she wasn't able to get down to the bottom. Gets an 88.5 centimeter run, and uh, that's going to be it. Run, 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 six. Six. All right, we've been waiting for this one, folks. It is the Sisters of the Heavy Metal driving the Dr. Dodge Monstrosity Frankenstein. Put together a van here with the barbecue on the back, and it is going. It is wheeling all the way down. They hear stuff getting clashed around. It's making it over top of the logs. It's throwing logs at the stand. This thing was crazy. Look at that. And it made it with a 9.49 time. It's sitting down here at the bottom. And apparently there is a brisket cooking in the back. They had the time all mixed up today. Here we go. Top down, bottom up can. It is sideways. It is almost backwards. It is everywhere. It is throwing logs all over the place. And it still makes it to the bottom with a 12 centimeter bonus distance wow and uh apparently the brisket is okay they got some inspectors down there checking it out maria did an excellent job holding that what would you call it it is the camper van four by four look at the articulation in the back of that whole bunch of modifications on this van it looked like it's been chopped it's been cut out on the bottom it's been hogged out in the wheel wells it's floating back and forth and it's got that wicked barbecue smoker on the back and we're going to be munching up on that right after we're done here there it was dr dodge maria driving for the sisters of the heavy metal with a 9.49 time 12 centimeter bonus distance all right first round results dumb skull comes out with two points for getting the longest distance out of the end there speedball herman ended up 6.67 time gets him one point steve chase gets the fastest time of the round with 6.02 giorgio was a dn F. BB Cookie was a DNF and then Dr. Dodge coming in there with a 9.49 full run and 12 centimeters. There's that sweet looking matchbox Volvo wagon going to get mailed out soon. Guess where that's going? Group 4 round 1 review. Well, the first three trucks did amazing numbskull. And then we had Speedball Herman from Gravity Throttle Racing. Hint, hint. And then there was Steve Chase from Chase Family Racing doing it with some style over then. Then we had Giorgio from G-Force Racing. When things started to slow down, he ended up not making it. And same with Baby Cookie from Junkyard Joust. That was a bummer run. Then there was Dr. Dodge and the sisters from Heavy Metal delivering the brisket at the bottom. 
We all want some of that. Beaverbrooks International, Gripe and Soul Diecast. They got the Aloha Invitational Pro Am, and Beaverworks got a pair of Camaros in on that. And we we're working on it, trying to do a good job in. Ended up not getting it over top of the Audis. They ended up beating us, but there was this last run right here where we came from the back and ended up scooping a victory on the very last lap. We got a tendency of doing that, apparently. Anyways, didn't quite make it through to the semis. Ended up with 16 points, but check out the rest of that series over at Gripe and Soul Diecast Motorsports. Custom Carmage 2 over at the MCM Bricks Diecast. D-Man here putting down some laps in that sweet looking Mustang coming out of the custom shop. It's got extra weight and the suspension inside of it. We did a pretty good job coming down out of this corner here, including this last race right here where exactly the opposite. We were had the lead and then ended up getting passed at the last minute. Kid taking third place, but that was still good enough to get the second chance round and we're looking forward to that. And then off back to Canada at 905 Diecast to Super Size Supercars and Beaver Works has got that Jack Mud Clear and we've run it down the stone road here before and it did a great race here at the end. It was enough to get into the top 12 or top 10, not sure. 21 points all together and that series is going to keep rolling on and we'll keep following up over at 905 Diecast Super Size Supercars. How's it going, everybody? Lester here, and I'm with Lance, and we got Dr. Dodge's camper van smoker here, and what a piece of work. Lots of amazing mods, and it just cooked dinner on the way down. And what a wild ride it was to watch that come down, and it smelled yummy, too. Giorgio is pretty much the exact opposite with a relatively stock entry, and uh, it looks cute, though, with all the stripes. And then you got the legend, Baby Cookie from Junkyard Juice with the premium rubber tire Ford Bronco. Clearance issues with these on the stock ride height have always been known to slow them down. Hopefully she just gets on the gas and pulls it off next round. Back down to you, voice. Thanks, Lance and Lester from the top of the mountain giving us that update. Steve Chase from Chase Family Racing is your current points leader. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we've got all of our TikTok and Facebook updates you can check out. This week's episode was brought to you by the Beaver Works Race Shop, and this was a special one this week. We've got the five-car team going on back down to the next round in Junkyard Joust. There they are right there. We've got some of the old team. We've got a new member. Going to check that out at the Junkyard Joust YouTube channel. And there you have it, folks. Group four, round number one is taken care of and in the books. Round number two is going to be coming up next. Don't forget to vote for your favorite looking car over on the main page. Until then, thanks for all you good folks for coming out to check out our stuff from Beaverworks Diecast Racing. We will see you next time. Beaverworks Diecast Racing. Your source for diecast racing action. Welcome back, Diecast Racing fans and beaver lovers out there. We have made it to the semifinals of the Stone Road Open, and it is the top nine times that are going to make it into the semifinals so that we can narrow this down to four. Moving on into the finals out of these great builders, awesome drives, and they have had some good runs going down the Stone Road so far. We got different rules for the finals. This time there's going to be no points are going to be applied. Top four times we'll be moving on into the finals. Each vehicle will get the two runs and if there's a tie, there'll be the bonus distance will be applied then. All right, folks, let's get on with it. Run, run, run. 
Orders random tonight, and we've got Arlo going to be leading the pack in the Hummer that went Hydro. So let's check it out. Here he goes. First run of the night, and he's on top of it. He's actually doing a good run, getting some good time. He didn't make the first time, and he got stuck in the deep stuff just where he slowed down there, but it doesn't matter. He still made it. Over top of the line with an 8.84. Not too bad to start the night off tonight. That's a respectable time. Think he even beat the one from before. There he is sitting down there in the trap. Top down, bottom up cam. See him racing, getting into it. Over top of the log. Slowed up a little bit in the deep stuff there. That's not going to do any good for the time. But still made it 22.5 centimeters out the bonus distance. Good stuff there. Eagle replay. Let's check out the first run of the night. Arlo in that great looking build. It's got the Arlo paint job that's got the fading different colors. And the Arlo racing on the side. He's got that on a lot of cars because this man is in a lot of races. And he's pulling it off here at the Stone Road. Getting down over top of the logs there. Ending it off. There he is, Arlo first run of the night making a full run pulling off an 8.84 time and getting a nice long 22.5 centimeter bonus distance right right two, two. Landlines absolutely killed it in the first round with his F483 Caddy swap out from Team Nobody. Let's see how he does in the semifinals on his first run. He's got the hell hang out. He's flying down there. He's got in. And no! He just flipped his logs right over on top of the logs. That's logs meeting logs right there, folks. That's not where he's supposed to be. He pulls a DNF on his first run, and that's no good, folks. Not getting a good time on the first run is not going to get you a good time at all. There he is, over on the logs. That sucks, folks. The F483 gets 130 centimeters for his distance, and we're going to have to get the emergency crews out there to pull him back off there and back up on his wheels. Checking out the Igloo replay. Weren't expecting that because his first run both times were excellent, and he was just letting it go this time. We told everybody, you have to send it on this one because there's no points. We're just going to be going with the fastest time and not on your roof. There it is. Landlines getting a DNF on the first run and 130.5 centimeters. Run, run three. Here we go, folks. Dusty Miles from Milestone Racing. This guy was unreal in the second round when he just owned the track like nothing we have ever seen before. The suspension in this truck is amazing. The wheels are huge and he's making it fast again. Holy moly, he just slammed himself down over top of the line. That was a heavy hit, man. It didn't even knock down one of the spectators there. I'm not sure if that was one of our officers or not. It looks like it was, man. I don't know if he passed out. He got hit by a rock or something, but either way, what a flip that was. No good for the bonus distance there. It doesn't look like any contact happened. Maybe he just passed out when he saw that truck flop over that hard he gets a bonus distance of 13 centimeters and that is it we got the emergency crews right there checking out the officer going to get dusty miles back on his wheels so he's going to be good to go in the next round let's check out the igloo replay wow what a wild ride that was this truck has got an amazing suspension system in there nothing but brilliance all the way through there flying through the deep stuff doesn't even feel it gets a great line to the long it seemed and at the last second just caught an edge looks like that suspension helped boink him over 5.89 time 13 centimeter bonus distance right by four James Ironbeard putting down some excellent runs so far to get him to this point. That's going to get him high up on the leaderboard. Let's see how he does this time. Run number four, James Ironbeard. He's up on. No, he's over. It's over. It's Wait, it's not over. He made it back onto his wheels again, and he's back over top of the line with a 6.35. That's actually a really good time for being a crapshoot dice roll all the way down the mountain it looked like he knocked out one of our service workers again on the side of the road we got people looking at her all right looking at this he's all over the place upside down and then gets it back on his wheels to make it over top of the line at the end with a wicked time and a 21 centimeter bonus distance that's even a good distance all right emergency crews are being busy tonight keeping all of these trucks on their wheels they're making it but not making it to the end 
and then they do, they're still flipping. Look at this. Right there, he goes over, he's upside down, he's sideways, he's over, pirouetting on the tail end, and was able to stick the landing. That's gymnastics in a vehicle at its best, gets over the line and falls over at the same time as the spectator. 21 centimeters in a 6.35 run. Run five. Mr. Dark from Dubious Diecast going to sneak up on the stone road this time in his electric hydro hydra there. He's got the Dubious Diecast skull on the front of it. He's got the Dubious Diecast on the side. He's got a red, no, never see a red Tesla. And there it is over top of the line with a 7.20. A little bit slower, but he's able to slip right by nice and smooth. Made it look excellent. He's out the bottom sitting there, sitting pretty. All right, top down, bottom up, can and shows you how you do it when you want to take it nice and easy in the lap of luxury going down there. 20.05 bonus distance. That's even pretty good there. Checking out some Igloo replay. This is the Tesla Cybertruck. Now, somehow he was able to get it delivered to him before the rest of the world was able to get him delivered. But either way, checking it out. There it is. Being nice and clean and friendly to the environment. Not making any bad lines over top of the logs and he is out in the sand trap at the very bottom 7.20 time and a 20.5 centimeter distance right right Steve Chase from Chase Family Racing did an excellent job lighting it up on the first round. We're going to try him out in the semi-final on this one. Here he goes. He's on top of it, doing a great job, making it fast. What an endo. And he is sliding on his side backwards. He is another DNF. Wow, we weren't expecting that. He laid down an excellent run in the groups, and now he just wiped right out. And this is one of those things we told the drivers to send it. We need you all out on this one because it's going to be a shoot out right to the end he stopped at 115 centimeters for his distance and it's emergency crews out there again to pick him back up again igloo replay steve chase in that excellent look and dodge power wagon doing a great job and just the rear end kicked way up and he didn't do an iron beard he just slammed down on his side and that was it. It's curtains for that run right there, folks. It's Steve Chase coming through with 115 centimeters and a DNF. Run right, right, seven. seven. Speedball Herman from Gravity Throttle Racing going to take that Jeep Wrangler down, representing Matchbox. All right, here he goes. He's on top of the rock still, and he's moving fast. Through the deep stuff fast, through the logs fast, and he is way out the other side, right up to the end of the scale, bounces off the rocks and holds it there. Now that's a good measurement out the end. He got a wicked time, 5.76. That's time for the top time of the tournament so far. Nice, and he pulls 30 centimeters out the end. That is right at the end of the scale, folks. What a great run. Speedball Herman representing Gravity Throttle Racing, taking that Matchbox Jeep to the limits. Right there, doesn't even feel the deep stuff. Picks a perfect line over the logs, and just right out the other side, hits the end, grabs the brakes, and holds it there. That's the way you do it, folks. 5.76 times. I'm in 30 centimeters. Nice. Right on eight. Numbskull from Numbskull Racing taking that Dodge D200 down for its first semi-final run. He has been rocking the grips and he is on top of that run. Look at that. He, whoa, he's over. He's done. He's sliding. He slid over the line. Ha, that was amazing. All right, so he just almost pulled the same thing as James Iron Bay, but almost went off the track, made it amazing. Well, I don't know if you would call it recovery. It was just nice and slippery on the side. He's got that thing waxed up good because he just slid down over the top of the line. He gets a seven centimeter bonus distance, which isn't really that good, but he got a pretty good time. 5.95 is not bad when you're not on your wheels on the stone road. That was pretty amazing. Actually, here he is. Okay, Igloo Replay gets into trouble right there, and it hits one of our guardrail posts and just starts barrel rolling him down, gets on his side in the logs, and just slips right over top of them with enough momentum to get him over top of the line with a 5.95 time and 7 centimeters. Run 9. 
Dr. Dodge and Sisters of the Heavy Metal are going to be taking their camper van smoker. I'm not sure which one's driving this time. It's either going to be Maria or Bobby Joe, but there they go. They're flying down there again. Just made it into the top nine, and now they're making their run in the first semifinal run, and they're down over top of the line with a 9.68 and flops it over on its side. Well, that just spilled the gravy right there, that's for sure. All right, but there's a good view of all the work they did on the bottom of that thing. All right, top down, bottom up, Cam. Flying down there. They got that barbecue on there. We know they're cooking something inside there because they have every run so far. And it's going to be scrambled as usual. There they are. Bonus distance of 10 centimeters out the bottom. Excellent looking run by Dr. Dodge in the Frankenstein. Getting driven by the Sisters of the Heavy Metal down there. We'll find out which one's driving later on, folks. But there it is. It's rocking from one side. That thing's got articulation in the back. It is hogged out so deep, and there's genuine engineering going on underneath on that ride. Gets it down over top of the line. It has made it every time, and this time it's, uh, it flops over there instead. All right, Dr. Dodge, 9.68 time and 10 centimeters. All right, folks, that's going to wrap up all nine for the first run of the semifinals. And there's what the time is going to be so far. Two DNFs, the rest have got on the map. Speedball Herman is going to be your leader coming out of the round one with that excellent, perfect run. And then you had Dusty Miles, who flopped right at the finish line, but still made it over with a decent time. And Numbskull sliding over in the third place so far. And James Ironbeard doing the same thing. Everybody just throwing it at the Stone Road. We still got two DNFs that have another run because there's no points this time, folks. We're just running it straight. Looking for the top four top times so we can move on to the final with those. So all nine drivers still have one more chance to make it into the top four. But until then, that's wrapping it up for this episode. Don't forget to subscribe and like and maybe even check out the merch while we're there. From Beaverworks Diecast Racing, we'll see you next time. Beaverworks Diecast Racing, your source for diecast racing action. Diecast Racing fans and beaver lovers out there, we are carrying on from round number one of the semifinals for the Stone Road Open. We've got Speedball, Herman, Dusty Miles, Numbskull, and James Ironbeard holding the top four spots right now with a DNF from both Landlines and Steve Chase. Big contenders there, and then the rest are getting another shot at the top four. Now, let's just get on with it. Run, run, run. run. Here we go, second run for Arlo. He's got the power and he's got the paint job. Getting ready to do this one more time. Last shot at the top four and he's off. He's going down there. He's making it a solid run as usual. Getting down over top of the logs. Picks a good line over top with a 7.27. Might not be enough to make the top four, but he definitely made it down and made it look awesome. There it is in the electric Hummer. Whoever thought that was going to happen. Hummers were the big old gas car to start off with, then somebody plugged them in. Top down, bottom up, Cam looked absolutely fantastic there, getting a bonus distance of 23 centimeters out the other side. That's carrying on, not too bad. All right, Igloo replay, let's check this guy out in slow-mo. Big bounce off the start and still gets on top of it. That was a low-slung vehicle, but he's got the weight just right. He was 
all stock ride height and was still just enough to push it all the way through, and some clever lines to the logs, down out the bottom into the trap, made it look awesome. That's Arlo on his second semifinal run, gets 7.27 and 23 centimeters. Ride, ride two. Landlines in that big F483 custom caddy swap. What is what was on the literature? We got this thing delivered to us. All right, he's off. He made a great run in the first group, and then all of a sudden he got a DNF in the last round. This time he's over top of the line. He makes it with a 6.81. Not bad at all for that big old Ford with all the logs and the keg and the you know semi paint job. Looks like he's got the patina going on there. Just yanked this thing out of the field. And and threw some junk in it and decided to bring it down over to the stone road and we love it 21.5 centimeters is the bonus distance out the bottom for this ride landlines and slow-mo for the igloo replay let's check it out this time he made it down and he made it look awesome just making it cruise over top of those rocks gets down into the deep stuff no problem picks a good line over top of the logs nice and careful gets out the bottom end into the trap Nice job by landlines in the F483, 6.81 and 21.5 centimeters. Run right, three. Right. Dusty Miles has been the one to beat in that ginormous F-250. It's not quite a monster truck. He's got the big wheels on it, though. He's going down. He's got it on top. He's floating it good. Last time he flipped over top of the lines, and this time he took it right out to the very end again with a great time, 5.56. I think that is the fastest time we have seen in the tournament so far. And there he is out the other side, great down on the bonus area. That's going to be real good for the measurement. We're going to check that out here in a second top down bottom up cam there was an excellent view there and yep 27 centimeters they're calling it almost off the end of the scale there for dusty miles on his second run in the semifinals with this full suspension f-250 look at those wheels bounce around he has got that thing dialed in down over top of the logs over top of the line and out the other side made it look excellent dusty miles in that F-250 pulling off a 5.56 and a 27 centimeter bonus distance. Nice. Right by four. James Ironbeard coming down to try and kill it again. He killed it in the last round. Tried to kill his truck, kill the track, tried to kill everything. Let's see if he can keep it straight this time. And he's off. He's on top of it. Gets squirrely right after the start, but he's holding on to it. He's taking a log with him. He's down over top of the line with a 5.76. That's fast. You know that's fast. And you know he wanted to bring that log down with him because it's like his buddy. Look at that thing. He's like right there beside him. Anyways, down from the top down bottom up camp. Look at this. Great looking run. He kept it fast. To throw it into the side there. Could have got a couple of extra centimeters if he caught it straight. 23 centimeters if for the bonus distance is still not bad. Igloo replay. This guy's last run was a dice roll. This time he was able to hold on to it, but it's still squirrely. Look at that. Toyota Hilux pickup truck. Just loving it. Slams it down into the logs. Gets over top of the line and then throws a whole bunch of debris all over the uh, track officials there. I'm sure they love that. 5.76 time and 23 centimeters. Right by five. five. Here we go, Mr. Dark in the Cybertruck. Dubious diecast with his second run in the semifinals. Gonna give it a shot. Here he goes. He's off the line. He's up on top of the rocks. He has been very consistent through all of the runs. Nice line over top of the logs, and he is out the bottom with a 7.66 into the trap. Made that look smooth like he knew what he was doing. That was the Cybertruck. This thing is awesome looking if you like, I don't know, angular stuff. It looks like a door wedge almost. Top down, bottom up, Cam looked excellent because he just makes this thing look excellent all the time. 15 centimeter bonus distance out the bottom, checking out the igloo replay. There he is off to start, down on top of it. He has been down every single round, keeping around the same time. This thing is definitely consistent. Yo, there it is, it's the uh, electric wave taking over the world right there now folks and this is one of the examples coming down over top of the line into the trap there he is mr dark down with a 7.66 and 15 centimeters right, right, right. Six. 
There you go. Steve Chase from Chase Family Racing. His first run in the semifinals was not that great. He ended up getting upside down. Here he goes, run number two. And he's on top, but this time he got a good fast time. Right through the lots. He just splattered those all over the place. Took a few with him. He's down with a 6.41 time. Those logs might have actually slowed him up a little bit when he got in there. You gotta pick that line when you're coming into the sticks, that's for sure. Look at this top down, bottom up cam and plows through those logs. It still slows him up a little bit. It seems he has got a 17.5 centimeter bonus distance on the bottom of the run. Checking out the Igloo replay. That did look excellent. And in the group runs, he had one of the fastest times there. Semifinals, he got upside down by just giving her and this time he's still letting it all hang out bouncing all over the place gets into those logs kind of sideways and they just blow out from underneath the tires and there he is down in the trap steve chase chase family racing coming through with a 6.41 and 17.5 centimeters run seven, seven. Speedball Herman getting ready for his second run in this semifinals. His first run was fast. Here he goes with the second run. He had a great distance out the end. This time he's still up on top, but he's going quick. He's fast. He's through the logs. And through the logs, threw him over. He's upside down. He gets a 5.95 time. He's still over the line, but uh, he got thrown right over right there. So, I mean, bonus distance is going to be no good. Top down, bottom up again. You can see he's bouncing one side to the other. He's going back and forth fourth and the logs didn't like that when he came in there sideways five centimeters is all he gets for a bonus distance on this run still made it look excellent the time is unreal these trucks have been delivering some amazing runs on this tournament so far and here we go speedball herman is no different having it nice and straight until those logs got him all squirrely right in front of the announcer stand and he goes over right there and so does uh half the crew 5.95 time and 5 centimeters. Right on 8. Skull, always a crowd pleaser in that ginormous D200. It is pretty much all stock except for all the weight that he's added inside there. He's got those axles all done up and he's coming down over top of the logs out the other side and weight up to the end of the scale on the bonus distance with a 6.22 time. That's a okay time and a really good bonus distance out the other side. Checking it out, coming down the bottom up, top down camera, and there he is coming right up to the end. Nice run by Numskull. 30.5 centimeters. They're naturally getting them right to the top of the scale. Coming out the end there. Igloo replay. That truck is all jacked up. Dodge. It's got the paint job. Numskull all over it. He's got his work done on the inside. Bouncing all over the place. Gets an okay line over top of the logs. Bouncing back and forth a little bit and into the rocks at the end. There it is. Numskull coming out with us 6.22 time and 30.5 centimeter distance run nine here we go folks final run of the evening dr dodge sisters of the heavy metal in the camper van smoker and we know they've got something special cooking in that thing coming down tonight there it is second round of the semifinals they've been making it every time so far it's must have a heavy load in that smoker this time because there it is right in front of the announcer stand didn't make it down we got dnf and they just dumped it right there oh boy looks like we've got something cooking in the back there it is down out it is all over the logs it is all over the place we have got scrambled everything in the back there they got ribs they got brisket they got steaks they got br they said they had everything inside there 132 centimeters is the bonus distance and go figure yeah look at that. we got the entire emergency crews are out there every vehicle all the people we got all the drivers coming over and everybody's paying big attention to that smoker on the back there go figure all right folks there it is let's check out the igloo replay on that final run right there dr dodge in that articulating back and forth smoker we're not sure who's driving there's bobby joe or maria could be either one they're taking care of the food they're taking care of business they're taking care of the run down through the deep stuff it looks like it's heavy through there it's just digging right in and gets high sided on the logs right there just short of the line and dumps it right in front of the announcer stand there you go sisters of the heavy metal doctor dodge inside of that camper van smoker getting a dnf 
132 centimeters and a bag of Kaisers. All right. Semi-final number two gets Dusty Miles, James Ironbeard, Speedball Herman, Numbskull still owning the first top four spots and going to be followed up. Steve Chase and Landlines getting number five there. That brings the overall results for the semi-finals. Dusty Miles, Speedball Herman, James Ironbeard, and Numbskull. Same four, almost in the same order right there. Landline, Steve Chase, Mr. Dark, Arlo, Dr. Dodge are not going to make it into the finals. And there they are, the final four. Going to make it into the finals for the Stone Road Challenge. Stone Road Open. First Beaverworks mail-in event, folks. And there they are. Numbskull, Speedball, Miles, and James Ironbeard. Excellent looking runs, and we've got excellent looking cars you need to vote for, folks. Landlines was group number one best looking vehicle. We had this going on over on the community tab, folks. This time we're going to need you to comment below for your best looking vehicle. Shoddy in the D100 group number two. Best looking from that group. Voted by you, folks. Look at that thing. It's excellent. All the way from Luxembourg. James Ironbeard in the Toyota Hilux. This thing has got excellent looking decal work all over it. Excellent look at flames did a wicked job making this thing look awesome numbskull got that great big dodge d200 and it's all like green and got the numbskull on the side of it it's got the golf on it the decal work is excellent on there and then there was baby cookie in the premium bronco from junkyard joust got the paint job on there got some uh junkyard joust marking on it great looking truck don't forget to vote for them in the comments below. That's going to wrap it up for this episode. Semi-finalists right there, folks. All right. Don't forget to get over to the main page and like and subscribe. You can check out the merchandise. And there's even the super things button if you like. From Beaverworks Diecast Racing, we will see you next time. Beaverworks Diecast Racing, your source for diecast racing action. Welcome back, Diecast Racing fans, to the Great White North, home of some dumb policy makers, but we've got some great rodents. It is Beaverworks Diecast Racing and the Igloo Proving Grounds getting ready to bring you the next Stone Road Open Finals. Yeah, this is the final four. These are the top four vehicles that have made it to the top of the crop out of an 18 car field. And it took a long time to get here, folks. Here's Dusty Miles in the suspension special. James Ironbeard throwing down at the perfectly built truck. Speedball Herman, lots of experience racing there. And then Numbskull somehow making that big Dodge 200, making it down. There's the time from the semifinals that got our last four drivers here. And there is different rules for the finals. Get to the bottom the fastest and you've got two tries. That's it, folks. Also tonight, we've got the winner for the beauty contest voted by you over on the main page. So there you have it. Let's get this going. It's the Stone Road Open Final. Right, 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 right. James Ironbeard is kicking us off tonight in that big 87 Toyota Hilux with all the paint job and decals. This thing's beautiful. There he is. He's off. He's bouncing around. He's getting it down there. He's going fast. He's going to get the cameraman to catch up, and he flips it at the end. It doesn't matter because he came by with one of the fastest times we've seen in this tournament yet. That's a 5.4. That's pretty decent coming down there on the first run. He was jacked to get down there. Everybody's ready to do this tonight. Oh, yeah, folks, that is spinning wheel action flipped over 24 centimeter bonus distance out the end for James Ironbeard and that Hilux. Look at that thing. Beaver works, igloo replay, slow mo coming down. He's up on top of the rocks, bouncing around, throwing rocks everywhere, and then he just starts 
putting the throttle to it. Great lines through the logs, didn't even feel it by that point, and just didn't care. That's one of those selfless throwovers on the line. Great stuff, 5.43 and 24 centimeters. Nice. Right, right, two. two. All right, Numbskull in that great big Dodge D200. He's jacked right up there, laying down some fast times in that, and then it gets crazy sometimes. See how he does now. He's off. He's up on top of the rocks. He's rolling around. He's going faster. He's coming into the lawns. And he's rolled. He's all over the place. He is off the track. It looks like he is down into the crowd. That's not any good at all, folks. It looks like we got some people maybe even trapped underneath the truck there. We're not looking sure. We need to uh, get a look at that. There's the uh, top down bottom up cannon there he is he's right over like some people jumped out of the way we've got the crews right there on top of that one make sure that the uh crowd and the spectators are going to be okay on that one folks and of course numbskull you uh Driver safety is a big deal around here at the Igloo Proving Grounds. Checking out the replay. Slow mo, see what happened there. He has been off and on with this truck. Sometimes it's really fast, sometimes it's really crazy and does some different stuff. And that was one of those instances. Looks like he got speared on one of the logs coming into that pile and just off. And I can't tell if some people bumped out of the way there or actually dove. Either way, it looks like everybody's going to be okay. Numbskull, the DNF, and no measurement. Run, run three. Dusty Miles getting ready for his finals run in this clever suspension system he came up with in this big old F-250. Here he goes. He's off and he's way up there bouncing around. You see that suspension traveling. It's going good to the logs. He's over. He's done. He's way out the other side. That was a nice run. Comes out with a 6.02. Not as fast as what he had done before in that truck. Might have got slowed up in the deep stuff a little bit. Bouncing around and doing his thing, but still makes it look excellent in one of the most most radical backyard suspension systems we got 26 centimeters in the bonus distance for that big ford dusty miles he came into this tournament and everybody just freaked out when they saw that he was so fast it's still fast it's stable he's bouncing around there's his right there he caught an edge coming in the deep stuff the logs tried to fight him he still plowed right through it all out the other side first run for dusty miles in the finals and that's going to net him a 6.02 and 26 centimeters right by four Speed Paul Herman from Gravity Throttle Racing going to take that big old Jeep Wrangler. It's got some weight in the bottom. He's got some polished axles. He's flying. It's going down. He's going fast. He's getting good speed through the locks. 5.69 time out the end. That's the kind of times you want to rip if you want to compete in the finals, folks. And he's doing a great job there. Look at that. Top down, bottom up. Can he bounce it around? Doing what he can to hold that thing stable when he gets over top of the line and does a nice job there. Pulls a nice sweet time and 23.5 bonus distance out the other side checking out the igloo replay speedball herman gravity throttle racing that is a channel you definitely have to go check out folks look at that he's on top of it bouncing around that's what you got to do to get the speed you got to float on top of those rocks not sink in pick a good line over top of those logs and over top at the end into the sand trap nice job 5.69 time and 23.5 centimeters that's going to wrap up round number one. James Ironbeard with a 5.43 time is your leader so far. Speedball Herman coming in with a 5.69. 6.02 Dusty Miles is the closest and Numbskull wiped out. So he doesn't even get a distance on that run. There's that wheelie big wagon we sent down for the wheelie big race at 9.05. Bit made it back, and it looks awesome, folks. Beaverworks International, we've got Manchild Motorsports doing the mini truck madness event down there. Beaverworks had that build, and there he is there checking it out. So we're doing their race. We got in on it good, and then uh, we had a little mishap that might or might not have had some casualties down there. We have to go check out the rest of the race to see what was going on over at Manchild Motorsports. There are links in the description. Then we're down to Rick Diecast Racing and Custom Carnage 2. Checking it out. We sent down that Mustang with all the weight and all the paint job. Looks excellent for out of the race shop and again had some kind of issues on our runs and that car got launched off into the abyss off the track. Go down there at Rick's Diecast Racing Custom Carnage 2. Check out the rest. Don't forget that you can grab that like button, subscribe if you haven't yet, and there's even a super thanks, we'd love it.
Run 5. All right, moving on to some round two action. James Ironbeard's going to be leading it off. He had an excellent run the first time. Let's see how he does this time. He's on top of it. He's gone. He's gotten good speed again. This time over top of the logs. 5.69, not quite as fast as the first run. Actually, I think that's tied for second place, but he's still got the top run in the first round. And that's going to count as overall at the end. And checking that out, top down, bottom up, Cam, right up to the end. He's going to have... An excellent uh, bonus distance of 29 centimeters. That's excellent for that Toyota Hilux. James Ironbeard made that thing look excellent. It performs excellent. It is a good build. There's extra weight. There's some work on the axles for sure. And then he hit it nice. All right. Over top of the line. Slow mo. And then right up to the end. James Ironbeard. Second round pulling off a 5.69. 29 centimeters. Run, 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 six. Six. Numbskull getting ready to take his second run for the finals in that ginormous Dodge D200. You can tell he's got some work done inside there as well. Great paint and he's off. This thing is crazy going down there. No! He's over on his lid again! Not exactly stable in that great big huge long wheelbase truck and it's like rolling the dice and he didn't get it on that round again. Full send for sure and sometimes it was just a little too much send on that one. One and the first one, that's getting a DNF in both rounds. And yeah, we got the emergency crews on top of that, making sure he is okay. They're saying he's coming around the 130 centimeter mark, somewhere in there. Anyways, Eagly Replay, checking it out. He just keeps on riding that inside wall and then comes back and hits the... Looks like the guardrail post again. He had a problem with that in the first round, and that ended up getting him on his lid again. DNF in 102 centimeters. Run, run seven. seven. Dusty Miles getting ready for his second run in the finals, and this is his last chance to get a better time than James Ironbeard that first round, and here he goes. He's letting it all hang out. It's full blast. He's down on top of the logs. He's coming through to 5.89, hits the rock, and flips it over after the line. There it is, folks. That was that suspension special that came out of Dusty Miles from Milestone Racing. And look at that thing bouncing around. He is giving it everything. Hit has got there at the end and comes out with a 5.89 and 17.5 centimeter bonus distance after he bounced it off that rock. And you can see that suspension boinging around after he uh, came off of that impact coming down. Here it is in the slow-mo. Still throwing rocks. Still getting a good line he's going back and forth he looks like he tried to take some logs with him gets out the other end and then it just smacks that rock right there there it is 5.89 and 17.5 centimeters right on eight here we go, Speedball Herman for the last run of the Stone Road Open, and this is the last chance anybody's got to catch up to James Ironbeard. Here he goes. He's going to have to push it, and he is. He's flying. There's almost some air back there, and he is over top of the line and over with a 5.89. That was still a fast run, and he was definitely giving her all the way down, just throwing everything he got at it for the finals at the Stone Road, because that is what you just got to do around here, folks. Right there, you can see him. He's bouncing He's getting her done over top of the line at the bottom in the trap with a 21 centimeter bonus distance out the end. There it is, catching up with some igloo replay. Speedball Herman coming down in that Jeep Wrangler and putting a great run on. Look at that. Big air right there, definitely on top of it. Gets slowed up in the deep stuff a little bit, comes through the logs, no problem, and little too much speed out the end, puts it over on the side, doesn't matter. 5.89 and 21 centimeters for Speedball Herman on the final round. All right, so that's going to bring second round is going to be going to James Ironbeard again with a 5.69 in the second round. Overall results for the Stone Road Open, James Ironbeard, 5.43. That's the fastest time we had out of all of the participants in the Stone Road Open. Beaverworks first mail-in event. Speedball Herman's coming in with second place. Dusty Miles third. Numbskull fourth. So there he is, folks. It's going to be James Ironbeard is the winner of the first Beaverworks mail-in event, the Stone Road Open. Look at that thing. 
We had 18 contestants started. You needed to have stamina. You needed to have speed. You needed to be able to keep it going round after round. And that's what James Ironbeard was able to pull off for this tournament, folks. And what an awesome job he did. Great build done by Ironbeard Customs on that Toyota Hilux. Second place is going to go over to Speedball Herman from Gravity Throttle Racing. And then we have Dusty Miles from Milestone racing with that amazing suspension Ford he brought with him. And that thing was tough to beat. Numsko was able to make it into the finals with some fast runs and then just couldn't hold it together there. But he did participate in the beauty contest. And the winner, after all you folks have voted, is going to be... James Ironbeard, so he might as well just stay up there on the podium because he's getting both the prizes out of this run. And for the bottom nine vehicles, we have got something special planned for all you guys. Before you're going to make it out of here, you get to go down the pebble path and we can see if we can squeeze some glory out of your vehicles yet, folks. 18 started and we made it all the way down to one. James Ironbeard. Look at that. He is the first Stone Road Open winner at the Igloo Proving Grounds. We also had Speedball Herman from Gravity Throttle Racing, Dusty Miles from Milestone Racing, and Numbskull from Numbskull Racing. Oh, rounding out the top four from this first mail in tournament, and we loved it. We hope you all loved it too, and all of the participants that mailed their vehicles in. Thank you for doing that. That was great fun meeting you all. All right. Don't forget that you can still subscribe and like, and there's super thanks and all sorts of social media we got going on out there. Most of all, thanks to all you good people for keep coming back here watching our stuff. We wouldn't do it without you. From Beaverworks Diecast Racing and the Igloo Proving Grounds, we will see you next time.